Welcome to another FPL video. This is going to be the best wildcard team for Gaming 28. It's going to be a very popular chip this week and with good reason. And I'm also going to be talking throughout the video about differences depending on if you're free hitting in Gaming 30 or not. And that could play a big part in which players you ultimately bring in. So let's just get straight into the video. It ultimately depends on your budget, but if you can help it, I would go for Jose Sarr and Aaron Ramsdale. I would definitely recommend going for one of them. And then your second goalkeeper could be Debravka, Fraser Forster or Foster. And that should be well and good enough. But if you can help it, go for both of them. And if I had to pick one, I'd still go for Ramsdale despite Wolves' double in 28, which is very good. And I would actually try to compromise that with a Wolves defender instead of going for an Arsenal one. But if you aren't free hitting in game week 30, then that's where it's a bit different and you can load up on these Wolves and Arsenal players instead and maybe avoid one or two Chelsea players in the process. But in most cases, I would recommend trying to have a good balance of all of these and possibly free hitting in game week 30. For those who wildcarded in 26 like myself and you set your team up in a certain way, it might be more beneficial to avoid using the free hitting game week 30. And that's why the difference in strategy and all these different chips is going to be very interesting. But these are the two best goalkeepers in the game. We have a very Chelsea-centric defence here. Their fixtures until the end of the season are absolutely amazing and their double in 28 could be very good. Now, just to make it very clear, I talked about this in my reaction stream as well the other day. It ultimately depends on the FA Cup. So if either Chelsea or Norwich advance to the next round in the FA Cup, they're going to have a double in 28. And that fixture between Norwich and Chelsea in Gimmick 30, that will be moved to Gimmick 28, thus forming a double for both teams. So Chelsea would face Burnley away and Norwich away and then the fixtures for the rest of the campaign are also amazing and that's why we've gone for two of them but another thing you could do and it also depends on your budget you could go for Robertson or Cancelo instead of Reese James or Rudiger depends on your preference and maybe double up on a Liverpool or try balance it with the three best teams in the country Chelsea Liverpool and City and that could be really good for you and I think going big at the back is actually viable but I try to balance out a little bit between the defense and midfield and go a bit cheaper up front that is my preference there. There. I've gone for Rudiger and James. They're the two most expensive defenders for Chelsea right now. And if you can't actually afford them, a really good and adequate solution to this is going for Thiago Silva, who in recent weeks has been getting a lot of bonus points and he's actually got a lot more bonus points than Rudiger this season. So you can definitely consider the Brazilian. I also did a statistical comparison between Thiago Silva and Rudiger and Rudiger was the victor there in pretty much all departments. But Thiago Silva still has very good goal for it. He's actually scored more goals than Rudiger this season and both of them are very good. In terms of bonus points, like I just mentioned, for me, Thiago Silva is better. He's shown it with the bonus points he's accumulated so far. And I think any of those three, you can't really go wrong. So I would actually try to avoid Alonso. And I'm going to be talking about this in my transfer tips video. But either James Rudiger or Thiago Silva, take your pick there. Go for one or two. And if you are free hitting in Gamic 30, my preference would be two Chelsea defenders. But there's nothing wrong with doubling up on Liverpool instead and going for Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold. That double for Chelsea in 28 could be very good. And I've gone for Walker Peters here. He's been in really good form and got so many points in Gamic 27. So fair play to any of you who brought him in. And I actually prefer him over Liveramento, who I personally believe he won't play both games in Gamic 28. And he's not that nailed. It doesn't really mean he's now suddenly the first choice right back. Walker Peters can play at left back and right back and he's just been sensational I think he's the most nailed between him Parod and Liveramento so I would go for him but you don't have to you could also go for Digne especially if you're not free hitting in game week 30 and cover Aston Villa that way I think there's quite a lot of choices in defense there's Cancelo of course Robertson who is still fantastic and you could arguably go for him over Arnold if you had to pick between the two it also gives you more funds and I've gone for Connor Cody at the last line of defense Aitner is still a really good option but as you've seen in recent weeks he can be benched which is very frustrating and Cody's just going to play every single game there's also Roman Sice who's got more goal threat but Cody this season has demonstrated that he has the ability to get a few goals and assists so I would probably go for him and cover Wolves that way especially if you don't go for Jose Sa. but there's always Kilman, Semedo there's quite a few options there in the Wolves defense I would just go for Cody for that price, the bonus points, how nailed he is, and just to have as many options as possible to come off your bench. This is a very interesting one. We've got Bakayo Saka and Coutinho who both play in game week 30. There could still be another of these midfielders who is going to play in game week 30 and it helps you navigate the free hit. But for the most part, it looks like a lot of these players would blank and it doesn't matter. You would navigate that with a free hit. But there's also Ziyech in midfield. I think he's a really good contender or Mason Mount for that Coutinho spot. 
I really like Coutinho's double there, but is he going to play both games? I think he will, but maybe he won't start both. That is a possibility that I am considering, uh, especially with the West Ham game just being a few days afterwards. Saka, though, I think is just a good option. He doubled in 26. I was happy to have him for that. He doubles here in 29. Doesn't double in 28, but a really good fixture nonetheless. I think with this wildcard team, it's going to be a bit awkward for some of you because a lot of these players on your bench could actually outscore some of those in your starting 11. So a lot of it will be down to luck in a way in terms of how you make your team selection but I would go for Bakayo Saka on a wild card even now and Coutinho that's the one that's probably the biggest if in this team and another way you can go about it is going for Ziyech or Mount instead of Coutinho and covering Aston Villa with Jacob Ramsey possibly instead of Joe Willock but there's so many different ways to go about it I think all of these midfielders are good same with the ones I just mentioned then there's the issue of Son and Kane now Kane has looked better in recent weeks but Son's consistency is very underrated and a lot of people were kind of put off by a few performances maybe a bit lucky to get a return against Leeds in the end Kane was the man of the match there for sure but I still like Son a lot and he's so clinical he gets into some really good positions and even when he's not really making those penetrating runs he's taken a more creative role and creating chances for Kulusevski, Kane and all the others at Spurs so I really like Son and I think he's just one of the most reliable options even pound for pound and you have Mane you've got so many good premiums at the moment but Son for me is one of the very best ones borderline premium you could say and I would definitely go for him. If it's a question of Son or Kane, I'd still go for Son, but I like both of them. It's very hard to fit both of them and Salah into your team. It's possible, but I think it would be at the detriment to your overall squad. I've gone for Joe Willock because he has back-to-back -back doubles in 28 and 29. He's also in very good form, and as demonstrated last season, he's a very streaky player, so I would go for Joe Willock, but as I just said earlier in the video, you could go for Jacob Ramsey instead and maybe cover a Chelsea midfielder instead of Coutinho. So this is just kind of a template but I've also offered some alternatives and suggestions and a lot depends once again I want to keep stressing it because it's very important if you're free hitting in 30 or not it's good to have an idea right now whether you're going to do so because that will inform some of your choices on your wild card and there's not going to be much to separate these players but ultimately your chip strategy could actually bring up the best points possible for your team I think on paper Coutinho has a really good double in 28 but if I'm looking at it if Ziyech is fit and available, he has been more nailed in recent weeks. I'd probably lean more towards having Ziyech instead of Coutinho. And I'm actually still looking to bring in one of Coutinho or Ziyech or maybe even Mason Mount into my own team. But a lot depends. I'm actually looking to possibly navigate Gamic 30 without using the free hit. I just use one in Gamic 27 as well. And just kind of a word of caution for any of you who have used the free hit in 27, you cannot use it in 28 because you need to wait two weeks between the first free hit being used compared to the second one and there will be a best free hit team video coming out if you want that uh, to happen then smash the like button let's get to 150 likes and that will definitely be possible but this is a really good midfield in my opinion let me know what you would change I think a Chelsea midfielder would definitely be at the top of most people's list to complete this team, we have Jimenez and two Southampton forwards. Who would have thought this at the beginning of the season? But Che Adams is in very good form. Raul Jimenez just got benched against West Ham. And Broya has now blanked three times in a row. So there's kind of question marks all over the forward line. But then you look at all the rest. Apart from Kane, who's looking like a standout at the moment, there's not really too many options that really appeal to you. And I think Jimenez will play both games in Gimmick 28. And he just got his rest there against West Ham. Huang didn't cover himself in glory. Missed a few good opportunities opportunities against West Ham and also against Arsenal so I think Jimenez will come back in he's very important to Wolves but one thing to say about Wolverhampton is that they've only scored 24 goals all season and that's why I've always talked about Wolves not really having great offensive options even though Jimenez is decent he'll tick along nicely the main reason he's included here and the main reason why I've kind of changed my opinion about him is because he had a double in 26 doesn't blank at all in any single game week, including game week 30, which is very crucial and has a very nice double in game week 28. But I don't think he's a great option and his ceiling isn't that high. In seasons gone by, he would get one goal and maybe get between seven to nine points, depending on bonus. He was a bit of a bonus points machine. You can't really say the same nowadays, unfortunately. Jimenez is still a very good player, but as an FPL option, he's not great. But then you look across the forward line, you've got Dennis who's decent, you've got a few others. Harry Kane is the standout. You can maybe substitute one of these midfielders like Hyun Ming Son and invest that money into having Harry Kane up front. But I don't think that's absolutely necessary. I still think Broya pound for pound is one of the best strikers in the game. He's been in poor form, at least FPL wise, but I think he will overturn that especially with these fixtures coming up for Southampton and he's still a good option Che Adams right now looks the better choice but there is a big difference between the two in price and if I had to pick 
I would still go for Broya, but you can't ignore Che Adams' form, which is very impressive, especially with the kind of lack of options up front. And if Southampton are knocked out in the FA Cup by West Ham, they're actually going to have a fixture in Gemic 30 against Burnley, and that will be very important. So you might not even need to use the free hit if you have enough Villa, Arsenal, Wolves, and Southampton players, but a lot depends on the FA Cup, and that's why this wildcard team could shift a bit, and once again, it depends on your chip strategies, which is very important, but up front, really, apart from these three, there is Harry Kane, possibly Emmanuel Dennis, although I wouldn't really look to bring him in. He's more of a hold, if anything, rather than a purchase, and I just look at the rest of the options. Malpai has one decent fixture left, and say Maximan, if he's back fit, could be a pretty good one as well, if you don't go for Joe Willock, or you want to go a bit different there, but up front, there's not too many choices. I just stick to kind of the same pool of five or six strikers and try not to deviate too much. Lukaku's one to keep an eye on, but I don't think he's worth the money. You might as well just go for Harry Kane, Hyun Ming Son, or go for a Chelsea midfielder if you want to kind of cover these bases with a premium striker or a Chelsea attacker. Let me know what you think of all of these options down in the comment section below. What would you change? I think Robertson's actually really good, and I would maybe prefer him over Rhys James or Rudiger. Then there's Ziyech or Mount coming in for Coutinho, and possibly Jacob Ramsey in for Willock. The rest I'm actually quite happy with, and it would be a very solid wildcard draft. And I've always said this, I think the main difference between those who wildcarded in Gimmick 28 compared to Gimmick 26 will be these Chelsea players. And now that it's very likely that they're going to go through in the FA Cup and have a double in 28, they just look so appealing. Their fixtures until the end of the season are really good. And those wildcarding this week, I would definitely try to go for two or three Chelsea players to maximise those returns. But the reason why Ziek isn't in the team right now is because he's flagged. He missed out on the Carabao Cup due to a little knock I think he had in the Champions League, which is unfortunate. But he could be coming in for Coutinho here. And that would be the kind of main difference. Coutinho, though, looks really good. In terms of the captaincy this week, I probably would go for a Chelsea player, whether it's the midfielder or the defender. Otherwise, there is Coutinho and always Salah even if he has a single game week I wouldn't really be a big fan of the rest one possibility and it would be a huge differential is going for Che Adams as a captain he's in form he can get a goal or two in this double game with the decent fixtures on paper but I think I would mainly veer towards the Chelsea players especially Rudiger or James um, maybe a midfielder once again Salah and then there's always Coutinho who has a really good double on paper it's just a question of minutes and who you back the most but thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video smash the like button and subscribe if you're new thank you to all the channel members we've got a new one the other day Denin so thank you very much and we also have Yorang, Aranya, Rock and Roll all in the Captain and Legend tiers thank you to Federico Caliso on Patreon and if you check out the description below you can see a list of all the membership perks as a Patreon or a YouTube channel member and consider joining the channel it helps us very much and also consider following us on Twitter and Instagram Dylan RCM we're almost at 1000 followers on both of those platforms so that would be much appreciated all the very best of luck we're trying to get to 15,000 subscribers next we just hit the 10,000 milestone and that's all very much thanks to you guys and also there's a discord server there's so much so check out the description below and the channel for more content for fpl and ucl fantasy so all the very best of luck for gimmick 28 also for that last fixture in gimmick 27 hopefully burnley can do something especially those of us who have triple we kind of got a lot banking on that one and i'll see you next time